Welcome to Solid Camp Professor on our series of Jumpstart, the easy way to learn Solid Camp. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be going through part two of our first lesson. Begin by adding a face milling operation to remove the excess material on the top of the part. Right click on the folder called Operations in the CAM Manager. When we do that, a drop-down opens up with a list of operations we can add to our part. We can then select the first operation, Face. The next dialog window that opens up shows the workflow in SolidCam. If we take a look at this workflow, we'll note that later on also in the program, we have almost all of our operations following the same type of workflow. Starting off with our geometry, going to creating our tool, choosing the levels we want to work on, the type of technology we want to use for that particular operation, and our links of how we want to lead in and lead out of our part. Working in order, the first thing we select is our geometry. To create a geometry in face milling, we'll click on Define, and we have several ways to choose our geometry around the part. Our geometry is the boundary that actually controls where our toolpath will be created. Now, since I've set our model as a target, I can choose the option of model, and instead of clicking on Define, I can click on this drop-down and choose Target. This selection will create a boundary automatically around the outside of the part, and that's exactly where I want my toolpath to work. Next, we will be selecting our tool. Since we have yet to create a tool, we will show you how to build one. For this operation, our tool type will be Face Mill. The next dialog box we encounter has a few options, but we are only going to focus on two of the tabs right now, Tool Topology and Default Tool Data. Tool Topology allows us control over the physical dimensions of the tool. Now in these fields, I can give the diameter of the tool. In this particular case, I will be using a 100 millimeter face mill. We also can set arbor diameter, corner radius, tool length, outside holder length, and cutting length, etc. Next is our default tool data, where we can control our feeds and speeds. Once satisfied with our settings, we can press select to accept our tool. Looking at our workflow, we will move on to the levels. First up is clearance level, whose value is pulled from our coordinate system setting. Next is safety distance, which is pulled from the MAC file of our post processor. Then on to upper level, which in this case will be the top of our stock. And finally, face depth, which represents the surface we want to machine to. That completes the settings of our levels. Moving on to technology now. In the technology dialog, we have several technologies to choose from, which are chosen through this drop-down. We have our hatch, shown here in the picture, giving us a back-and-forth toolpath stepping over until our entire surface is machined. Our second option is contour, which drives around our chain and stepping from the outside in until it machines our entire surface as pictured. Lastly, and this is the option we will be using for our part, is one pass. Because our tool is wider than our part, we can machine the entire face in only one pass, as evidenced by the picture. We also have the option of having a finish pass by adding a value to our offset field and checking the finish box. But we will not add a finish pass here. Now we can select Save and Calculate in order to calculate our toolpath. This concludes part two of our first lesson on our series of Jumpstart. Thank you for joining us on Solid Camp Professor. Take care and have a nice day.